Hi everybody, welcome back to Lockdown Lessons Part 30 now we've done. Um, and with me today I've got Helen Passfield, who is an owner of Own It Limited. So firstly, may I just kick off by saying hello to you, Helen. Hi, good morning, Phil. Thank you very much for having me this morning. Um, yeah, as, as Phil said, I'm, I'm an owner at Own It, um, and I'm very pleased to be here this morning. Thanks very much. Good, no problem at all. So um, this is called Lockdown Lessons. So unsurprisingly, all of the questions are going to be relating to what we've experienced during lockdown. Um, so perhaps you could just give us a bit of an insight into what Own It actually do first before we kick off. Yeah, sure. So we are um, we are a group of um, finance professionals. Um, there's, uh, there's around 15 of us now. We work we work together. Um, we um, we help our clients out largely with transformation projects. Um, most of us have, have a background in finance and supply chain. So um, we help out our, our clients um, with, um, so for example, process change or, um, or, or finance integration or um, and any kind of change, change that's, that's going on. We specialize in, in that for our clients. Got it. Fantastic. And you're based all over the place, aren't you? We are. Yes. Yeah. So we um, so we're based. Most of us are actually based in the in the southeast of England. Um, I think there's one somebody I work with is in, in Yorkshire. But but yeah, we'll, we will basically go anywhere our, cl our client is. Fantastic. Fantastic. So so if we could cast our minds right the way back for about about a year and a week ago, March the 23rd, 2020, um, at what point around that time, around that period, did you think hmm, this might be a, a bit of an issue for for the country, really, commercially, um, and maybe yeah. your clients and yourself as well? What point did you think we might be running into a few issues here? Yeah, well, it's honestly it's hard to believe it's been it's been a year. It's um, yeah. It it's um yeah you see kind of Easter coming around again and it's really hard to be you know believe it's been a year um I think initially really was when when we thought there might be a problem I, I think worst of it probably was the first maybe three to four weeks before um where you know no one really knew what was going on um and so because our work is largely project-based a lot of our projects were um you know were, were on hold or delayed so um, so I think it was the initial period what was, um, you know, was was the worst for us. Um, once people realised, you know, that this is going to be a bit of a long term thing, um, then everything started to pick up again, um, and we started to just adapt the way that we that we did things and work in different ways. So I think really the first three to four weeks um, was 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 the toughest um and then we kind of settled into a routine we actually had um a very strong fourth quarter a very positive fourth quarter um the back end of last year um and then yeah unfortunately um it's come become a bit tough again now we've had quite a tough first quarter this year um there's a couple of things going on also um well there's the um the, the ongoing obviously the ongoing covid issues um also brexit coming to a bit of a head um and historically the first quarter is a bit of a tough one for us anyway because okay. um, people are still sorting out their budgets and, and that kind of thing so client take on can be a bit tough anyway but then we've got those other two things compounding what's what's going on basically brexit coming to a head in covid as well so um so, so yeah, the, the first part and then, you know, sort of almost a bit like Groundhog Day, it's it's that that same period again, you, you know, you know, this year, but hopefully the same thing will happen, it will pick up again and we'll, we'll you know, um, slowly gain momentum and have a good strong fourth quarter again. Good stuff. So, so, so when you, um, when you first got, um, everyone got locked down sort of back in April, mm. March, March, April last year, yeah. What, yeah. how did you need to adapt to the way that you were actually operating your own at Helen? Um, well, we basically went online. So, um, to, I mean, to be honest, we can do the job. If, if you've got a laptop and Wi-Fi, we can do our job. So we're very lucky in that way because I know, obviously, a lot of um, a lot of people, you have to be there in person. But really, for what we do, we don't. Um, it, you know, it, it, it's better when you're there in person because you, you get that, you know, you get that personal contact. And um, sometimes it's just more efficient to do things um, in person. So um, the particular project I was working on at the time, I was running a lot of workshops, to gather data and gather information from um from end users at the client um you know normally we'd we'd all get together and be in one room um this time around we were virtually in, in one room so you know maybe a bit slower and maybe we had a few more review cycles but you know we got there and the project was successful so we did that so 
um, basically we just we just had to go all on all online. Um, I think you know the whole country is kind of used to that now. But, um, but we but, are yeah, so we, we all went online, and I, I think we I suppose some of the hiccups we've experienced with that is. Um, if the client is very security conscious, like, you know, initially sometimes, you know, some of their devices just didn't accept the likes of, of, of Zoom and some of the more informal um, platforms. So we were using, sometimes we we're using WebEx and I think we've um, kind of experienced and experimented with every just about every online platform, depending on, on what the client wants. I mean, we'll be driven by what the client wants. So, so we can use, you know, we're happy to install and use whatever they need. And um, I guess it depends on their, you know, their security and their requirements. Um, Absolutely. Ones. But um, so, yeah, we got, we got there in the end, though. But, but um, yeah, managed to run everything virtually. Good, good. So, so what what wins have you actually had since um, since we were in lockdown originally back early last year? Uh, something we did do. So I mentioned earlier. Earlier, I mentioned that the first the first few weeks were um, that they were they were quite tough for us. The first three or four weeks. So we were kind of we were meeting regularly um, and thinking about well, how could we you know how could we change how could we change things how can we encourage our clients back. So we offered something which was our, we called our COVID rate, and we offered clients um, you know if they signed I think back at the time. I think it was 30th of June was was the date, and we said clients, if you sign up by 30th of June, we'll we'll give you preferential rates to attract clients in. So we certainly won a few projects through doing things that way. That kind of you know nudged people into signing up a, a, a bit earlier, especially um, sort of smaller clients where 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 those numbers have a bigger impact on their on their bottom line. Um, and obviously we're we're able to do that because um, you know we're cutting down on our on our travel and our expenses. So um, so that was kind of a win-win for 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 client and and for us. So that was that was one thing that we did. Um, we also set up um, a lot of um, between the team, like internally, we um, set up like virtual, you know, virtual coffee morning, which we did on Monday mornings, and we also had Friday virtual Friday drinks as well. Oh, that was and, nice. Uh, yeah, no, it's, it's a good way of also. So there was no, there was no compulsory. You, you know, you had to, we just we had to slightly different times so that it would suit different people, and it was just a way of us all, you know, staying staying in touch and and seeing, you know, what we. Could, what we could do um, to you know, you know try and um, you know keep the keep the team together when we weren't necessarily you know meeting up as much as we as much as we might um, you, you know the nature of how we work we're not all together every day anyway because we're you know we're all in different places or we're out on clients but um, but this kind of kind of um, was um, a bit like um, trying to make it a bit like the glue sort of holding us together for the um, you know for the um, for the um, for the start of it, we did. We did. We did. Well, we did carry it on all the way. Um, you know, all the way through. And actually, it's only just very recently that we have um, that we sort of slightly changed the structure. You, you know, now that the the structure of, of how how the country's working is is going to be changing a little bit. But that was yeah something that really helped us. And the COVID rates certainly helped us too. Good, good, good. Um, so what would you say you've learned about yourself over the last year then that maybe, uh, you know, you, you're in a different situation than you've ever been before in your life. So what would you say your biggest learnings about yourself have been, Helen? Yeah, I think this is probably one of the, the more um, the more difficult questions. Um, but but yeah, maybe learn to, I suppose, learn to slow down a bit and stop and think just because you have more time. So, you know, all, suddenly all your commuting time, you've, you've got that back. So um, probably you know, learn to not jump into the things and learn to sort of evaluate um, circumstances and situations a bit more um, and just having having a bit more time. And I think, um, you know, it's, it's something I like doing anyway, but, you know, the, the balance between work and life being a bit more fluid. So um, you can do certain things with with family at certain times and then it doesn't matter you can just you can just work late so um you know learning that that's acceptable and i think also other people in in the country coming around to the fact that that is acceptable that that's you know i think that's been a really really positive change absolutely i think that's, that's a really good answer so so for, for those of the people that, that are actually watching this right now um yeah. that might want to uh find out more about what you do what would you say your 
I suppose a better question would be, what does your ideal customer look like for you? Um, yeah, I think our ideal customer would be it'd be someone who is in um, some kind of change. Um, so they've got a change which is impacting them. So whether it's kind of imposed on them because it's a regulatory change, you know, we've got a lot of um, sort of regulatory experts who can um, help guide customers through through that. Um, also, it can be um, so say people are going through merger and uh, um, M&A activity and, and um, so they need to align their processes um, perhaps because they've, they've got other, you, you know, they, they've suddenly got other um, strands coming into their business or perhaps they want to make sure that everything is all, you know, fully boxes ticked for, for, for going through a due diligence process for, for, for M&A, or perhaps they've just, you know, seen some exponential growth. So they need to, you know, tighten up how they're, how they're doing things from, from more informal to, to being, you know, a larger company and, and um, having that structuring. So our ideal customer really is somebody who, um, who is um, yeah going through some change of of some sort? So so whether it be um, you know imposed upon them through regulation or something they've chosen to do through M and A activity um, or, um, or or through expansion something like that or or they they just think they need you know new infrastructure there um, you know we can we can help with that. Fantastic. And what sort of um, what sort of roles uh, in terms of within the organisation are you actually dealing with then? Um, are they they're usually CEOs or, or, or another role within the organisation, maybe? Uh, very broadly, to be honest, when I mean, we deal with everyone, I, I think that's something that's a particular skill set of ours that we can deal with, you know, anyone at any level within the organisation. So at client take on, it would be basically be the budget, the budget holder. So who, you know, who wants this service and, and who's allowed to, to spend X to, to, have the, to have the service. So typically that would be, um, you know, quite a senior stakeholder, um, but it can be, you know, whoever in the business, you know, wants to have that, that service, but, but yeah, typically someone quite senior. Um, but then once we're actually up and running and doing the project, um, then we would be dealing with um, yeah, any, anyone really who, um, you know, who we need to talk to and, and who, um, you know, who's um, sort of active within, within the project. So uh, day to day, I sort of mentioned workshops earlier. So, so day to day, really it'd be the end users. So that typically would be more junior people. Um, we'd then be getting sign off from sort of their managers as we as we go through the project. Um, and then and, and then again, we would be reporting back to the key senior stakeholders as well. So typically we'd have a cycle of kind of weekly project reporting to, you know, let them know that we're we're on track and that we're, you know, we're making making the right steps with with the project. Good. Fantastic. That's really good. So if any of these people actually want to contact you to find out more about what Own It do and just to understand exactly how you might be able to help them, um, what I will be doing, Helen, is I'll be putting your details in the uh, in the comments box below this video, oh, either on YouTube yeah. or LinkedIn. But um, yeah. but just just uh, run off. What's the best way they can actually reach you? Um, yeah, whatever's best for them, to be honest. I mean, they can email me, uh, and obviously I'll give you the, you know, all these contact details. But yeah, um, email me or uh, or give me a call or WhatsApp me. You know, whatever whatever they like to do, I'll I'll pick that up. Lovely. Well, it's been an absolute pleasure as always, Helen. Thank you so much, and um, yeah, I'm sure we'll catch up soon. Brilliant. Yeah, lovely to talk to you. Um, thank you very much for having me. No problem at all, Helen. Take care. Bye. Thank you. Bye.